everybody welcome to another episode of free for all i'm your host big john and this show is coming to you via grumblings media grumblingsmedia.com you can find us on all the major platforms youtube rumble twitter facebook instagram gab truth social getter everywhere basically uh apple Podcasts, spotify pandora <clears throat> anywhere you could catch uh, a podcast we're on so uh, having gotten that bit of business out of the way, let's dive right into some things of interest that have been occur occurring in the libertarian, libertarian adjacent worlds uh, the past week. Uh, there's been continued drama going on uh, for libertarians in the state of California. The, the state uh, affiliate in California, the Libertarian Party of California, LPCA, is having its convention on February 23rd of this year. And uh, they, their 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 uh, convention has managed to uh, generate a whole bunch of controversy as we take a look at it. Uh, you could see on their homepage, front and center, 2024 LPCA convention with special guests RFK Jr. and Dr. Cornell West. Uh, I have just one question: What are two socialists doing being featured at an LPCA convention? What is a libertarian affiliated convention? Even if it's not a nominating convention, why are RFK Jr. and Dr. Cornell West invited as speakers, as panelists? Okay. This seems to be very counterintuitive for a political party, especially when you consider that there are LP candidates, declared LP candidates for president, serious candidates, not like flaky libertarian candidates. And I could talk about that a little bit later, but specifically to California, there are LP candidates that have not managed to be, or to find their way to that state convention. And one has to ask, why is that the case? We touched on this in the last episode. I touched on it in the last episode. Why are certain, allegedly, why are certain libertarian candidates charged one fee? I think it was $5,000. Others were charged 3000 Some not at all. Some, it is rumored, were paid to appear at the convention, meaning RFK and Dr. Cornell West. Why is this and why is this going on? It it is so counterintuitive. It is so against the grain, you know. And on Twitter, when I posted some of these comments, I had a lot of feedback from people saying, "Hey, aren't libertarians always bitching about not being invited to the debate stages?" Yes, that's true. The debate stages where all parties are there, where different ideolo ideologies are being put forth and presented and debated and and addressing specific issues. This is not the case here. This is the Libertarian Convention. When's the last time you saw a Libertarian Party candidate invited to the GOP convention or to the Democratic convention? Right? That, that, that does not happen. There's a reason for that. And being Libertarian and being pro-free speech doesn't mean that you get to set up your club in such a way that you are essentially shooting yourself in the foot before you even get uh, going in the race. Like, look, first of all, I don't even know what's so interesting about RFK and Dr. West. Okay. Look, I've met Dr. West. I've actually had a meal with him. I don't agree with a single thought that comes out of his mouth, a single word that comes out of his mouth. I really don't agree with just about anything he has to say. Nice dude, but I wouldn't want him speaking at the, libertarian convention any more than I'm sure the socialists, the socialist party, the communist party, whoever he's uh, formally associated with, I don't know that they'd have a libertarian at their convention. What's the point? And for those of you that are saying, well, it raises our profile. It raises awareness. RFK raises awareness. Why? RFK isn't a libertarian. 
The only one that wants to see RFK run as a libertarian is someone like Angela McArdle. No one else does. Amazingly enough, and for weird reasons, different reasons, right? I've seen where Dave Smith on Twitter has said he will work against uh, RFK being the libertarian nominee. I've seen where um, a lot of the Mises gang is saying they will not support him. I'm seeing where Chase Oliver is saying he won't support him, and rightfully so. Who is RFK to come in and say, well, I'm considering being a libertarian because, hey, they've got ballot access that I don't have as an independent. I want their 50 state ballot access. Spike Cohen is another one who said he will not tolerate. That's a bridge too far. You know, and it's a, it, it, and in some ways it's especially hypocritical coming from these from the anarchist wing of the libertarian party because if you're an anarchist, if you're an ancap, RFK represents nothing to you in terms that aligns with your ideology. The only thing that he's aligned with is that he's a, he's a vaccine grifter. That seems to be your main attraction to RFK, right? He, he pushes bullshit on vaccines, not just the COVID vaccine, but the MMR vaccine, everything else, every bad vaccine, every vaccine that was ever created is, is a, a government plot, according to him and to a lot of so-called libertarians. OK, and that's a that's a almost another discussion when we get to the like the hoaxer candidates that have decided to jump into the race for the Libertarian Party nomination. But going back to RFK specifically, why would you want him to be your candidate? There's nothing to be gained from from uh, RFK. He's a one issue candidate the same way that Tulsi Gabbard is. OK, she's good on anti-war. What else about her is libertarian? I'll answer that. Nothing. Nothing is libertarian about her. Under any of the various flavors of libertarian that uh, libertarianism rather that exist, she's not an anarchist. She's not an ancap. She's not a minarchist. Right? None of that stuff. She doesn't go around quoting uh, uh, von Mises. She doesn't go around quoting Milton Friedman. She doesn't go around quoting uh, Hayek or Bastiat or any of these guys. John Locke, Adams, nothing. So, so why are these people? Why are why is the Libertarian Party so listen, the Libertarian Party, if nothing else, has to stand on principle, has to stand on intellectual grounding. OK, and yes, there is room for debate amongst ourselves. There is room for some infighting. Right. There's a lot of issues where we can disagree and disagree strongly with each other. That's natural. That is part of the process. That's fine. But why do we need these outsiders? And yet, here's a case where when it comes to RFK, I don't think anybody considers Cornell West legitimately to become a libertarian, right? For some reason, the, the state uh, the state affiliate in California thinks that their party should be a, like a podcast, right? Let's, let's, let's have a podcast and we all get on and yell at each other a little bit and have these fun debates where we call each other's uh, philosophies uh, ridiculous and things like that, right? So, there, you know, like uh, when Adrian Malagon explained it to me, he says, hey, uh, we want to prove that our ideas are best and that we'll debate anybody. We're the party of confrontation and, and things like that. Let's shake up the old school libertarianism. We don't want those regime libertarians like me, you know. Um, we don't want those guys, Boomer. Your day is done. It's the, it's the day of the youngsters and, and the, uh, the young bucks or whatever you want. Okay, fair enough. I have no problem saying, "Hey, let's take let's take the ideological debate to them. Let's take the ideological debate to RFK, to Cornwallis, and we'll prove we're better." I have zero problem with that. But is it really is your state convention the place you want to do that? I would say no, it's not. And I think a lot of people in the libertarian movement or political movement, I should say, not the philosophical movement, the political movement tend to agree. Like I said, Dave Smith, uh, I'm, I'm trying to pick out the guys who are more associated with the Mises caucus, who are the more uh, in your face messaging types who, who are looking, seeking this confrontation, right? Uh, the Mises caucus. Uh, so it would be like, say, Dave Smith, uh, Spike Cohen, right? Even to, even Jacob Hornberger, which for some reason, these um, these uh, these right wing MAGA guys who like to pretend they're libertarian 
uh, all of a sudden are crapping on Jacob Hornberger for not being anarchist enough, for not being libertarian enough. And again, we'll get to that in a few minutes. So I would I would say, like, why are we why is the LPCA? You see, and again, it, like a lot of it is so confusing to me because I don't understand it. Lars Mapstead uh, had something to say about it. Uh, let me uh, pull that up. Uh, make sure we got that uh, here for him. So Lars uh, posted something the other day saying Robert Kennedy's position should also disqualify him from participating in any official LP events by continuing to invite and promote him to speak to libertarians while charging large amounts and even banning some LP candidates uh, from participating. Uh, one of our state uh, parties is joining him in his disrespect of who we are and what we stand for. I call on my home party of the LPCA and other parties considering it to rescind any invites to him immediately and call on my fellow candidates to reject hypocrisy and defend our principles by refusing to share a stage with him at any official LP convention. And he tagged uh, uh, Chase Oliver, Mike Termott, uh, Jacob Hornberger, Mike Rechtenwald, and Joshua Smith, okay? Now, I don't see where where Lars is being unreasonable. And again, I like I've had I've had the pleasure uh, to to interview every announced presidential candidate uh as of 2 weeks ago. And and I mean lengthy interviews, you know, not these 10-minute things or you know, these X space things, you know. I'm just saying like I had the opportunity uh, we set aside uh, 90 minutes or an hour and we sat down and we, and we talked like, Hey, what is it? Your, what are your beliefs? What's your inside and outs? All of them ranging uh, from, uh, from Mike Rechtenwald, you know, obviously he's the more hardcore like ANCAP, you know, all the way up to Chase Oliver or Mike Termat, who are considered more minarchist, everybody in between. You right. And, and they all seem like reasonable people to me. I've, I've said for a couple of weeks now, this is probably the most polished class of candidates, with the exception of some idiot like Toad, um, to 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 run, you know, for the LP nomination. There's no there's no John McAfee's. There there's no Vermin Supremes. All right, and and as much as you want to crow if you're a libertarian, quote unquote, that guys like Vermin Supreme. Or John McAfee, uh, free speech, they should be allowed to speak, this and that. It was those kind of guys that made your party a joke. That, to the general public, made your party a joke. Libertarians have a tough enough time trying to get people to vote third party based on the fact that, A, people are just set in their ways with the duopoly. They can't handle more than two parties uh, intellectually, cognitively. It's too much of a stretch for them. So you're you're already fighting an uphill battle. You're also fighting an uphill battle in terms of the machine, in terms of the um uh you know, like unrig the system, as Lars says, or wreck the regime that um that Rechtenwald's campaign has kind of like put together, right? You're also fighting horrible things like ballot access nonsense. Like as soon as a libertarian I ask Larry Sharp what he goes through in New York every every go round. He gets ballot access, then they they have a midnight session of the legislature and, and they change the requirements even better. It's, it, it is literally easier to run against Putin in Russia uh, than it is for Larry Sharp to run for governor of New York. Okay. We, we've got enough of those problems. We've got enough as a party politically to say, Hey, you know what we also need to add to our burden to this rock. We're pushing uphill constantly. We need to have clowns. That's what we're missing, because to prove an ideological point that will tolerate all opinions, right, we need clowns. We need clowns running for office. We need the equivalent of a David Duke. We need the equivalent of, um, who is that? I forget the guy in the 70s showing my age. He, he always used to buy time. He was some rich guy who used to buy time. Uh, 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 Lyndon LaRouche. We need a Lyndon LaRouche. We need a... Uh, we need all of these guys. Why? Because we, we don't have enough trouble. So let, let's have clowns represent our party or run for attempt uh, to, to gain the nomination. All right. And again, I don't know any of these guys. I don't know who Vermin Supreme is. I don't know him personally. Right. I never knew John McAfee personally, but they came off as clowns. They came off 
as either unhinged or just making a mockery of the whole process. And, and again, you want to make a mockery of the process, right? Like this toad guy or whoever he is. I've, honestly, I've never heard of him. I, I had to do some quick just to see who he was, right? But you show up. Uh, I'm getting distracted. I'll get to that in a second. But the, the problem that I'm talking about with someone like RFK is why are, why is Angela McCardle is the only person that I know of of any sort of rec, name value recognition that is out there actively trying to get RFK to join the, the to run as the Libertarian nominee. There's been, you know, uh, it was documented I think in the New York Times last summer that um, that uh, uh, RFK was having uh, conversations. Uh, about possibly running as a libertarian with McArdle um, uh, last week uh, on CNN, the, uh, the interviewer asked uh, uh, RFK straight out, are you uh, considering joining the libertarian party to, to run? Now, this to me was a fascinating question for several different reasons. Like, first of all, why did he say the libertarian party? Why didn't he ask him, well, why are, are you thinking of joining the green party? Are you thinking of, of of joining the Communist Party to run or the socialist, the U.S. Socialists? Are you thinking of joining their party to run? Why did he pick out Libertarian? You're left with the answer that either the interviewer was an ignorant idiot, which is possible, or, or possibly and, <laughs> the interviewer is reflecting the population at large's opinion which is the Libertarian Party has just become the default for every whack job that comes along. And make, make, make no mistake, RFK is a whack job, okay? Like, again, I have no, no tolerance for, for vaccine grifters. And he's been a vaccine grifter from before COVID. He's still on that whole vaccine causes autism kick. Right. And, and it's people like him that have, that contribute to things to like diseases we thought we had eradicated through the miracles of, of uh, uh, technology and science and biomedical uh, uh, progress. And then, you know, the grifters like him come along, you know, they, they throw a couple of million bucks, it draws a couple of million bucks into their law firms and, and they're, they're vaccine grifters. OK, so, of course, being a vaccine grifter, uh, the natural question from the interviewer was, oh, well, you know, since the Democrats don't want you, are you going to run as a libertarian? It's funny. Like, no, he didn't pick out any other default party that RFK would more naturally fall into, like the Socialist Party or the Communist Party. Right? Those are more natural ideological fits for RFK. But even weirder was when RFK says, I'm looking into it. I'd love to be, a, you know, I would consider being a libertarian. Uh, we're having friendly talks with the, with the Libertarian Party, uh, and I would love their ballot access in all 50 states, because right now I'm only in 29. I only have access to 29 states. Wow. Like, in some way, it was refreshingly honest, and in other ways, it was ridiculous and idiotic that that conversation would take place publicly. <laughs> Excuse me. Why is that going on? I, it is, it is, it is so to me, and I feel like sometimes I'm, I'm, you know, I'm screaming it for no reason here because no one else seems to, or I should say very, there's enough people in the libertarian movement that just miss this part, which is like, it is so obvious that he has zero. Listen, governor Bill Weld, William Weld in 2016, when he became the vice presidential nominee, I said it at the time, others said it at the time, Spike Cohen said it at the time. You go, that was a bridge too far. But, but, even though we all knew he was no libertarian, by the time election day came around, he was telling people to vote for Hillary Clinton. Okay? So, but at least you could understand the logic of it. The logic of it was he paid, a, a, he guaranteed that a certain amount of uh, money, seven figures, would roll into the LP's coffers. And for better or for worse, he 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 made he came through on that promise and it was Gary and Bill Bell. Gary uh, Gary Johnson and Bill Weld. Should have been Gary Johnson and Larry Sharp. That should have been our ticket in 2016. Okay? 
But you would think the Libertarian Party learned from that nonsense and said, like, really, even though it'll be more difficult, let's bypass the short-term fixes. Because much like anything, whenever you pick the lesser of two evils, you're still picking evil. And what happens is you accept the lesser of two evils every time it comes around. It becomes easier and easier to accept the lesser of two evils. So now you're saying, okay, we learned our lesson. William Will was a bridge too far. It was a line we shouldn't have crossed. Okay, we think we learned our lesson. We didn't. Because the only reason you would have RFK as a libertarian is because you think it would raise your profile. But, you know... What profile is it raising to the public? Because now you have, now you, let's say he is the libertarian nominee, right, for some weird reason. Let's say he becomes the libertarian nominee. Now that you're exposed to more people, that he's on the debate stage, right, because he, he'll meet whatever ridiculous level of, of rigged poll uh, support he gets. It, just out of curiosity, he'll get that, like Perot did. And he'll get on the stage and he'll debate. What's he going to debate as? A libertarian? Is, is he going to be authentic uh, other than uh, what some libertarians hold as uh, uh, the COVID vaccine, which is his big thing? What else, does he, what else is he going to argue on credibly? Nothing. He's a socialist. He's an authoritarian. He wants, to force the, he wants to force certain behavior. It's just that right now it's behavior that some libertarians agree with. Right? He's anti-vax. Um, he would probably get rid of uh, vaccination for MMR vaccines. He would probably tie up uh, the vaccine uh, uh, makers in ridiculous uh, regulations and, and so on and so forth, right? So he's not a libertarian. And it's, it's, it's uh, symptomatic of what I think in my opinion, are a lot of libertarians coming to the party based on one issue. <clears throat> and you see a lot of this. You see it as we transition now. You, you saw it in the libertarian uh, uh, debate that was held uh, by the state affiliate in Georgia the other night. Now, I'll be fully honest and fully transparent. I didn't see the debate start to finish. I've seen... Uh, clips online that each candidate has posted, that some observers have posted. So I, I, I'm, I'm prefacing what I'm about to say in all honesty. I did not see the, the, the full debate. But, uh, and let me show you this. Uh, one of the guys who is now claiming to run for president uh, is this guy. Uh, let me show you. Okay. Now, I have never heard of this guy, Toad. Uh, and I'm not saying that to be uh, to run him down. I just honestly have never heard of, of him, as I'm sure very few people have heard of me or remember anything that I've ever done uh, in broadcasting. OK, so I'm not doing that to put him down by saying I've never heard of him. I honestly just have never heard of him. Um, I could not tell you his official positions. He's running for president. And I understand this is ninety nine point nine percent a Howard Stern type of run. Of uh, in the Libertarian Party. He's there for a goof. He's there to raise his own profile. He's there probably just to make his podcast uh, get more impressions and views and, and subscribers, okay? And um, to the extent that someone let him do that in the Libertarian Party, more power to him, okay? But listen, you show up to a Libertarian, uh, to a presidential uh, debate, Everyone else you could see, like I said in the previous show and earlier in this show, this is the most polished group of libertarian candidates we've had in a while. And that, that, again, it, it goes beyond their individual flavor of libertarianism. Mike Rechtenwald looks to me, at least shows up just as professional looking and cuts a, a professional enough political figure as Lars Ma Ma Mapstead, who is also more leaning towards the anarchist sort of ANCAP. Measy side, as Mike Termott does, as Chase Oliver does, who are more minarchists and more, quote, traditional type of uh, libertarians, right? So I'm saying that whole spectrum of libertarian candidates looks fairly presentable, fairly professional, for lack of a better term. Then you look at this guy, backward cap. 
baseball jersey of some sort. Uh, I think he's got his podcast in the, what is it? Tower Gang, I think. Okay. Dirty jeans. And the incredibly uh, uh, libertarian fashion choice of no shoes. Now, I don't know if that's a gimmick that everybody on their podcast goes barefoot or whatever. But shit, man, can't you get your act together long enough and be the maverick w without having your, your feet, stinky feet up on stage? Like, seriously. I get it. You're a troll. I get it. But what's interesting to me is that that type of guy is a MAGA guy. It's something that I've noticed. I've discussed this with other guys in the libertarian movement. And again, from all stripes of libertarian movement. And, and here's the thing. There's a lot of... There's a lot of MAGA guys who show up at these libertarian conventions because it's easy to take them over. Libertarians have a natural tendency to let anyone speak, which they should, but it doesn't mean that you have to allow everyone entrance into your club, right? It's a private club. You can say, listen, as much as I disagree with the way Adrian Malagon is handling uh, the convention in California, hey, it's a private organization. We all disagree. With, some of us disagree with how they're handling things. Others think it's great. You know, I've seen people say, hey, Malagon's doing a great job in California. He's combative. He's in people's faces. He's 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 ch shaking it up. And yeah, let's let's prove to the world that RFK and Cornell West can't hold an ideological candle to, to libertarians. Fine. I, I disagree with it. I think it's it's fundamentally uh it, it, it it fundamentally diverges from what a convention should do, right? But I can't accuse it of being unprofessional in the sense that it makes us look like clowns. It makes us look like we don't know what we're doing, but not necessarily clowns. This makes us look like clowns again. This is the this is the uh, the the whole vermin supreme John McAfee thing all over again. And this guy Toad of all people took exception to the fact on Twitter that some people were saying, "Oh, he's like Vermin Supreme." I think one guy said, well, at least Vermin Supreme was wearing a boot, even if it was on his head. And he got all upset. Like, for some reason, this guy Toad can't understand why people would find this objectionable or, fi or find this, at you know, as being a glance. Now, he could be a Rhodes Scholar. He could be more steeped in libertarian uh, ideology than me and 20 other guys put together. I'm not making any sort of uh, determination on that because, like I said, I really don't know about the guy. I haven't seen him. I mean, I think his podcast uh, from the few clips I saw, very similar to what I used to do uh, for a living uh, 10 years ago, which is like he's making uh, gambling predictions. I don't know, fantasy football. But he's making like uh, uh, DFS picks, whatever. OK, I, again, no judgment on that. I have I have no problem with what a man does to make a living. You understand, as long as it doesn't conflict with my business. Okay, that was a horrible Brando impersonation, but you get my point. I, that the, the what he does for a living really doesn't bother me. But when you cut this figure right here, when you cut this image at at a presidential uh, debate, what you're telling the world is I am an ass I am an ass clown. It, it, you are do if you are a, an intellectual libertarian, if you are a libertarian that you think can make a difference by persuading people, this is not the way to do it. What you are telling people is I'm a troll. And then you will get other trolls to join you. So either your goal is to get trolls, MAGA trolls, to, to come into the Libertarian Party and follow you around saying things like, you know, whatever he was saying, like immigrant, like somewhere along the line, we got MAGA cultists who joined the Libertarian Party and use Libertarian philosophy of free choice as cover to say stupid things like, if you took the vaccine, you should be disqualified from, for running from office. Why? That is the most asinine interpretation of a Libertarian position that I've ever heard. Being pro-liberty does not mean being anti-government. Being pro-liberty does not necessarily mean being anti-vaccine. These are ridiculous uh, positions to hold. Now, you, you could tell me, like, hey, Big John, didn't you just say that RFK should be disqualified because he's not a libertarian? Yeah, because he's not a libertarian. He's a socialist. 
we can label things as long as we label them accurately. So, so for example, if Toad or um, who is the other guy who's a podcaster, hardcore, part, uh, Clint Russell, Liberty Lockdown, right? Now, again, I, I don't follow him. I know he's got a big following. I know he's big with the Mises kids and he's big with the uh, with the anarchist types. Uh, great. You know, I don't agree with him. Right. But you're he. Uh, Hornberger, uh, Jacob Hornberger, who is one of the original type of Mises guys. Right. Like last time around, he was the Mises endorsed uh, uh, candidate. Right. Like. How in the world are you accusing Hornberger of being disqualified because he doesn't want to shame people who took the vaccine? I took the vaccine. I've been a libertarian for longer than these guys have been breathing, like Toad and and whatever Clint Russell. Okay, I agree. We look. I'm not an anarchist. I believe in some night watch government state. Fair enough. Let's have a debate on that. Let's have a conversation on that. I have no problem with that. But I took the vaccine for a lot of different reasons. I vaccinated my kid. My kid also got the MMR vaccine. Okay? That doesn't make me not a libertarian. Because being a libertarian is all about individualism and choice. The second you start saying you can't be a libertarian, it's one thing to say you can't be a libertarian because you believe in collectivism. You believe in the state determining who gets to come in and out of this country. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be a libertarian and then endorse selective, you know— uh, rather, I should say, you can't be an anarchist and claim that you select o- that you endorse only selective government action. We all have choices. We can make those choices as libertarians. As a libertarian, I defend the choice of someone to be a socialist. Okay, of course I do. I think he's wrong. I think she would be wrong. But at the same time, I wouldn't call that socialist a libertarian. You made the free you made the choice of your own free will to be a socialist? Hey, that's on you. Doesn't mean that all of a sudden I'm calling that socialist a libertarian. That's just nonsense. One of the core developmental skills of any child as they grow up is the ability to properly label things. This is a core de- cognitive developmental milestone. Okay? So to be able to properly label things is one of the things that makes us human and distinguishes us from the rest of the animal kingdom. So we should be able to say, so-and-so is a libertarian, so-and-so is a Democrat, so-and-so is a Republican or conservative or a MAGA rube or whatever. A libertarian, though, should tolerate all those points of view, unlike the other guys. A leftist won't rest until you have bought into their uh, ideas of how society should be organized. A leftist will not rest until you believe their stupid wokeism, their stupid identitarianism, their their weird matrix of who's been uh, who is on what part of the ladder because of what offense they allegedly suffered. On and on and on. That's a leftist, by the way, which is no different than the Trumpists who have their own matrix, except it's just based on different ide- different uh, notions, different ideologies. A libertarian should say, here's what I think is best, which is individualism, which is the greatest amount of uh, free will possible, the least amount of government possible, right? Now, again, our libertarians, hey, some believe no government at all. Those are the anarchists, right? But if you believe in no government at all, Isn't it a bit hypocritical, for example, to say that we should be putting a barbed wire on public land to prevent others from coming into this country? And if you do hold that position, let's debate that. 
But is that a reason to start shitting on other candidates if you're Clint Russell, if you're Toad? And by shitting, I don't mean shitting on the position. I mean personally shitting on the people that are sitting in front of you or beside you. Taking the vaccine, I think Lars and Chase were the targets for this and Jacob Hornberger. I don't know if Jacob Hornberger actually said he took the vaccine. I'm trying to remember to my interview with him. I don't remember if he admitted to taking the vaccine or not. He may have told me it was none of my business, which is also an appropriate response. I don't remember if he took it up. But Hornberger's position was whether you took the vaccine or not, if it was your choice, you why are we why are we why are we using that as a litmus test? Okay. Like this Clint Russell is so overly affected by the lockdown. And again, that's his experience. I don't know what he and his family went through. He he says it affected him greatly. He says it affected his family greatly. Fantastic in the sense that you have that strong belief. Not fantastic that you suffered in any way, but fantastic that you have that belief and you're very passionate about it. That's great. But how are we how are we? Why are we using this as, as like, uh, to, 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 if you're a libertarian, especially if you're a Mises guy, if you're an ANCAP and you're crapping on Jacob Hornberger, like to me, it's almost inconceivable. Like of all the people you could crap on, on that to say, and because Jacob Hornberger said, Hey, the, taking the vaccine is a choice, man. Why are we, why are we dis quote unquote disqualifying people based on whether or not they took the vaccine now? If you're a libertarian, if you're Clint Russell and you say, in my mind, anybody who supported lockdowns and mandates should be disqualified, let's have that conversation. I think that's appropriate, man. You can you can be pro-vaccine and anti-mandate, like I am, by the way. I made the choice to take the vaccine. Fair enough. I took it. You call me an idiot. I don't buy into the grift. Fair enough. You may not think it's a grift. Uh, the vaccine denial or okay, great. Fair enough. Back and forth. Your medical experts, my medical experts, you know, my crazy guys, your crazy, guys, whatever. Okay. Fair enough. But you never once told, heard me say people should be forced to get the vaccine. People should be forced to vaccinate their kids. Right? So there's a difference there. And, the, and it's okay for libertarians to say, hey, like Penn Jillette is another one. Like he said, I was pro-vaccine. It was a chance for us to say I'm pro-vaccine, but no one should be forced to take this, this vaccine if they don't want to. Perfectly reasonable, entirely libertarian. And now we're using it as some weird way to, to, to disqualify of all people as being not libertarian disqualify Jacob Hornberger of all people. It's this weird thing. And again, it's, and again, I have to put this on the Mises people. Again, if you, whether you think it's good or not, this is the Mises caucus in action. This is Angela McCardle's teenage gang of, of memesters and, and trolls that are responsible for this. And on top of that, it's a lot of MAGA type people, right winger people, the Nick Fuentes followers, uh, the the Proud Boy guys, the Oath Keepers, it's all these people sort of reach into one, right? And they kind of find one issue that they think libertarianism gives them intellectual cover for, right? So, hey, I'm a racist who kind of hates immigrants and only wants to see white people in this country. So what I'm going to do is that's too extreme for me to say and try to get Trump elected. So what I'm going to do is... <clears throat> I'm going to be I'm going to say I'm a libertarian because libertarians believe in open borders. Right. So if I go in there and say, hey, uh, I'm a libertarian, uh, but uh, this open border thing is bad. I can crap on everybody. And if anybody gives me any 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 sort of grief over uh, me calling Mexicans dirty rapists and referring to people fleeing desperate conditions, I'm going to refer to them as an invading army. Right. Right. And then I'm going to go uh, support the Republican statist autocratic governor of Texas and help and say, hey, man, uh, do you want people breaking into your home? Of course not. Nobody wants anybody breaking into Texas, especially an invading army of 
dirty Mexican rapists and drug dealers. By the way, forgetting all along that as an anarchist, I probably advocated for no drug law, drug laws, ending the, the war on drugs, all that fun stuff. And uh, hey, man, you can't tell me what to do. And everything the government does is wrong. The FBI and the CIA are part of this alphabet soup of uh, violating everybody's rights. But when it comes to the border, we're going to deploy armed agents of the state and various other states, okay? I use state with the capital S. We're going to deploy, we want to deploy armed agents of the state to put up implements of death, barbed wire, I don't know. There, some of these guys I've seen is uh, they're they're advocating shooting any immigrant that tries dares set foot in Texas, right? That's what we'll advocate for. And if anybody, and if anybody gives us any crap about it, we'll say, "Hey, we're libertarians, man. Don't you believe in free speech? We're anarchists. Don't you believe in free speech?" And by the way, this comes from the very top. This comes from McCardle. And if you try to call McCardle out on any of this, as I've documented before she just blocks you and ignores you malagon at least tries to address you i'll give adrian credit like if you bring any of this sort of stuff up to adrian not that he's mccardle's mouthpiece that as far as i know but if you bring it up to adrian at least he'll engage you he'll try to engage you more so even than some of the classic liberal caucus all right I, i'm not i'll give adrian his props okay but some of these guys are just using libertarianism as an excuse to either be racist or just be general assholes on principle. So, so when you look at these guys, like, like again, I, I don't know too much about this toad. I'm being 100% upfront. I don't know too much about him. But from everything I've seen on Twitter so far regarding his performance, and I call it a performance because I think it was a, a piece of, a, a, you know, an attempt at trying to either be funny or an attempt uh, to be a troll and drive uh, drive views for his podcast. You have guys like that. They're just using libertarianism as an intellectual cover, and like on you know it. And, it, and the root cause of it also is these one issue libertarians, like Dave Smith. And again, Dave Smith, I've never talked to. I've tried to talk to him. I've tried to invite him on for an interview. Uh, he's, he, I've never heard back from him one way or another, but Dave Smith, I can never accuse of being an idiot. I can't accuse him of not understanding libertarian philosophy. I can't accuse him of not being steeped in libertarian knowledge. Okay. But as far as I could tell, as far as I could tell, he's a one issue libertarian, or I should say that's his main thing is one issue. And that's anti-war. That's his main thing is anti-war. Um, that causes him to see everything through that lens of anti-war and then ascribe that to libertarianism. Now, I was very happy to see that he very quickly, in his own way, rejected RFK being a libert uh, potentially being the libertarian candidate. He said, yeah, he's pretty good on anti-war, but at the same time, you know, you have to look at the whole Israel thing. He supports the wrong side there and, <clears throat> you know, this and that. So... He came to the right conclusion, I think, for the wrong reasons, but he came to the right conclusion, all right? But Dave, uh, Dave Smith may be in, uh, largely um, indicative, symptomatic, <coughs> of these so-called libertarians who are one-issue libertarians. It could be that you're an anti-war. It could be that you're anti-vaccine, which, again, is a weird sort of position to be on. You could be anti-mandate. Being anti-vaccine seems kind of ludicrous to me to use that as your calling card into libertarianism. It's really more, more of a calling card to a MAGA guy. Okay? But let's assume that you're actually a libertarian. If that's your one major cause, anti-vaccine, Odds are you're not going to fit in well with the rest of the, the majority of the libertarians. <clears throat> and listen, you want to form some, some party that's based on hatred and ignorance, in my opinion, go ahead, form it. <clears throat> you could be the anti-vaccine, I hate Mexican party. You could do that. And try to get someone elected that way. And then you can have your debates and, and be honest about your debates. Okay. 
in the sense that, yeah, I'm an old fart, you know, uh, I could see someone saying, yeah, boomer, actually, I'm a Gen Xer, but I get your point when you say something like that. Okay, yeah, I'm old. I'm old enough to remember w what libertarians are supposed to stand for based on our stated philosophies, our stated principles. So why, I don't understand why we now feel the need. If Listen, here's another one. Justin Amash. And let me uh, pull this up. Justin Amash, I think it was a week and a half ago, uh, two weeks ago, said, hey, I'm looking at running for the Senate in Michigan, uh, but I'm thinking of doing it as a Republican. I'm checking out how to do it as a Republican. Now, you may say to yourself, oh, he's a goddamn traitor. He's fickle. First, he was a Republican. Then he joined the Libertarian Party to become the first Libertarian uh, congressman ever uh, to take a seat in Congress. And then he wouldn't run for president as a Libertarian. And now he's ditching the Libertarian Party. Listen, uh, Amash, to me, is one of the few people that I've seen out there that stands on his beliefs. He stands on in that sense, I think he has integrity in the sense that if the party changes and doesn't represent his beliefs, he ditches it. He did that to the Republicans. He didn't ditch the Republicans because he thought it was a better move for him politically. If anything, it signaled the end of his political career at the time by leaving the Republicans, by leaving Trump, by by appropriately saying Trump had there was reason to impeach Trump. OK, and if you're a libertarian and you disagreed with him because he he said it was OK to impeach Trump. The second time, I think the first time around. Then guess what? You you might be the one that's not a libertarian. OK, certainly him quitting the Republicans over it is not the act of a coward and it's not the act of someone who is looking to further himself politically. Like I said, it cost him his seat. I've heard some people say he might have lost the seat anyway, but I doubt it. If he had decided to run as a Republican, all he had to do was say, yeah, like, yeah, look at them. Look at them uh, attacking poor old Trump, a paragon of virtue. Look at them. They're, they're, they're impeaching this poor, innocent bastard. Okay, all, that's all he had to do. And he didn't. He refused to. I'm just waiting for the Mises kids. I haven't seen any yet, but I'm just waiting for these kids to uh, to jump out and say, well, Amash was never a, a, a real uh, a libertarian. He was never really a Mises guy. I'm waiting for that because that's how that's how teenagers respond when something doesn't go their way, right? Their first reaction is to just impugn the character of the person who rejected them, right? That's very Trumpian. Again, it kind of feeds into my point of they're all MAGA guys, really. Right. That's a Trumpian thing. Trump. Plainly put, is not a genius by any stretch. I doubt even his most ardent supporters would call him a genius. I know there's a few that think he's playing 5D Jess all the time. He's not. He's not. If you've ever spent any time around him, and I mean like 10, 15 minutes, you can call him empathic. You can call him a showman. You can call him in tune with the common man, whatever nonsense you want to say. You might make claims to that. But no one has ever walked away from a discussion with Trump saying, this guy is super smart. This guy is someone I could see being given lots of information, being able to process it intelligently and coming up with a correct stance or even a reason stance on anything. He flies by the seat of his pants and he, you know, he, he just makes whatever he feels is going to be populist in nature, whatever's popular. Okay. Okay. Wait, that's one way to govern. Clinton did the same thing basically, right? He governed by, by opinion polls. That's Trump. He was anti-vaccine. He called it a hoax. He called the, you know, uh, like he spent a lot of time instead of figuring out how to solve the problem, he spent a lot of time coming up with uh, really funny troll like nicknames, Kung Flu, the China virus. Right. Um, spent a lot of time, you know, uh, coming up with stupid names for his political opponents. Oh, he's good at that shit. But, you know, first he lied about the vaccine. First, he lied about the, the covid. Right. That's on tape. I know people don't believe it, but listen to the tapes. He said he lied about it. He said he played it off as a political uh, 
attack from Pelosi. He said he admitted to all that stuff. Okay. Then he was against the vaccine until polls said that showed that people were for it. Then he was for it. And to the extent that if you're pro-vaccine, you should be thanking Trump because he pushed it through for using government, um, whatever government influence he could, he pushed it through. <laughs> okay. If you're pro-vaccine. But my point is that when Amash left, he didn't leave because he's not a good libertarian. He left because the Libertarian Party, and he said as much, he left because the Libertarian Party no longer represents him. <clears throat> it no longer represents his views. So what are we to do with that? What are we to make of a party that took one of its honestly brightest young political stars and basically said, hey, you know, you're not down with the nonsense, so, you know, you're not welcome here anymore. The people I've talked to in the Libertarian Party, to whatever limited experience I've had talking to people, Larry Sharp, uh, Spike uh, Cohen, uh, Jacob Hornberger, all these guys, um, when you ask their opinion of Justin Amat, we all love Justin. He's great. He knows his stuff. Okay, all of them. But but now there's podcasters that seem to think that he does, you know, because he's not a Trump uh, sycophant. He's not a real libertarian. I can't tell you how many people have said, look, I'm a libertarian, but if I have to, I would vote for Trump. Why? I'm not telling you to vote for Biden, but why would you vote for Trump? Stay home. If you can't bring yourself to vote for the libertarian, stay home. Don't vote at all. That's the, that's the gangster move there. Stay home. If you can't vote libertarian, stay home. Don't vote for anybody. Why are you voting for Trump? Now, is it coincidental that last time around, Trump lost several swing states because of the libertarian vote? In, in Trump's mind, that's the case. I maintain that in those states where the libertarian vote beat the spread between Biden and Trump, Trump's assumption is all those votes would have been mine if it were not for Joe Jorgensen, which is nothing could be further from the truth. The truth is the libertarian vote, generally speaking, splits 50-50 when, the, when they're asked those questions like a ranked choice type of thing. You know, they'll be like, ah, I guess I would have voted for Biden. You know, 50% will say Biden, 50% will say Trump, roughly. But but Trump doesn't view that way, and and the tr and the Trump brain trust, <laughs> to, to use that phrase, uh, doesn't view it that way. They view it as if you're not voting libertarian, you should be voting Trump, and you shouldn't be voting libertarian. That's their mindset. I've said that before. When Howard Stern wanted to run a PR goof, a PR campaign in 1994, he ran for governor of New York. Which party did he choose? The Libertarian Party. Why? All he needed was 300 of his whack packers to show up at the state convention, sign up that day, and vote for Howard Stern. And he became the Libertarian nominee. All the time acknowledging that it was a goof. All the time knowing that he would never actually run for governor. Okay? It was literally a publicity stunt. It's not far-fetched to say that there are these MAGA-loving people out there who are more than happy... To, to drive the Libertarian Party into the ground, make it a non-factor in the upcoming election, either by getting people to believe to vote for Trump as the lesser of two evils, or by just having the party implode because you've got people like Angela McArdle sitting at the top who spend more time trying to get RFK to be our nominee or spending resources, for example, trying to get Trump back on the ballot in Colorado. Like, if it's not some sort of weird conspiracy to get MAGA, MAGA people in, uh, to destroy the Libertarian or take over the Libertarian Party, if it's not that, you couldn't have planned it any better than that. Because if you were to do a, a conspiracy theory like that, this is what it would look like. This is what, you, what it would look like. You would have somebody at the top who pretended to be a Libertarian, all of a sudden, when she gets there... The only thing she seems to want to do is help Trump out. That's the only thing she wants to do. 
you have some well-meaning people. Again, I don't doubt the intentions of David Smith. I'm not saying he's a plant. I don't know why I keep picking on him. He's the one that comes top top of mind. I don't I don't think he's a plant. But he serves the purpose of the plant. You've got you've got guys who are running around barefoot on stage at a state convention in Georgia. How did how did that happen? I could be wrong, but I don't think he's appeared at any other presidential debate. I could be wrong. I don't think this guy Toad has showed up anywhere else. I know this guy, uh, Clint Russell, I, again, if I'm wrong, it's just been a recent development that he decided to run for the vice presidential nomination. And even him, I could tolerate a little bit at least, but like this guy Toad is a complete troll. How, why was he allowed to be on the stage even? If you're the Libertarian Party in Georgia, why is he allowed to be on stage? The answer can't be because we believe in free speech. I believe in free speech. I I, I don't want, uh, I'm not going to invite uh, Biden to dinner. I'm not going to invite Trump to dinner, even though I believe in free speech, because they'd be in my house. And I don't want to hear their nonsense in my house. That doesn't mean I'm anti-free speech. It doesn't mean you're anti-free speech, Libertarian Party, if you say, hey, guess what? I don't want a guy running around like, talking shit and trolling whose only purpose is to troll people running around barefoot, cutting a horrible image for our party. I don't want that at my, at, in my house. And if you're the LP in Georgia saying like, well, that's what we want. Okay. I guess that's what you want, but then you really shouldn't be taking yourself seriously as a libertarian or libertarians rather. Anyway, that's about what I have to say this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm getting a little bit uh, long-winded here, but you get my point. What, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand. Like, I, if you've noticed, for the most part, I touched on it. I'm not getting into issues this week. I'll get into issues next week. The, 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 the what's happening at the border. Uh, maybe the Hamas uh, Israel issue. I could, I could go into that again. Some other issues, economic issues. You know, that's that's fine. But at the very core, if you're talking about libertarian politics, to me, this is what needs to be resolved right now. I think, the first of all, McArdle, I think, is running again. There has to be an effort made to get rid of her. Even if you're in the Mises, even if you're in the Mises caucus, you can't be happy with her performance. Membership is down. Donations are down. <clears throat> There's all sorts of allegations about her uh, using her position inappropriately, funding her, ba you know, having her baby daddy on the payroll, all this fun stuff. Again, there are allegations. The reason I say it's allegations because she doesn't address any of it. And if you try to ask her, she just blocks you. She just ignores you. Okay. So great. Hey, maybe she doesn't, this isn't a court of law. She's not required to answer, but guess what? We shouldn't want her at running an organization. Give us some answers for Christ's sake. Tell us what's going, defend yourself. Tell us what's going on. I don't understand why the, you know, like, and, and ironic, isn't it? That, that the people who bitched about uh, Sawark, I hope I pronounced his name right, Sawark, the last time out saying that he was a do nothing, you know, he wasn't uh, whatever the Mises crowd had to say about him. <coughs> How are you dealing with your leadership right now? What's going on with them? Specifically, McArdle. I, 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 I'm not going to crap on everybody there because I don't know exactly how, how or if I should crap on anybody else. But her specifically. The, and listen, like it or not, you sit at the top, you're like the quarterback. You get too much of the credit when things go well, and you get too much of the blame when things go bad. So, you know, too bad, Angela McArdle, if you feel people are picking on you or giving you too much grief, okay? That's the position you ask for. That's the position you're in. This, this comes with it. So start explaining to us what's going on. Start explaining to us why you're courting RFK. Start explaining to us why, under the guise of free speech, you're tolerating assholes and recruiting assholes into the Libertarian Party. That needs to be addressed. That needs to be answered. Okay. <laughs> I've talked myself into a tizzy. I just need a quick swig. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to do that. Okay. Uh, any comments, feedback, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below, wherever you're watching this YouTube rumble, uh, or listening to us on Apple, Spotify, Pandora. Uh, you can reach us on X Twitter. 
Uh, you can reach uh, Grumblings Media. Go to uh, at Grumblings Media on X. You can reach me personally if you have specific issue with me. I'm on Twitter uh, at Big John underscore SXM for my old Sirius XM days. You could just see that uh, it's right there on the screen. Uh, you can, I, look. I'll I'll talk to anybody. I'll talk to anybody. Okay. So feel free. Reach out to me. I'm more than happy to engage with you. Um, and that's it. Until next time, when we'll ha when I'll do another one of these rants. Uh, this is Big John signing off for free for all. Catch you next week. Hey everybody, this is Big John from Grumblings Media, and I just want to say thank you for watching our content. If you want to support our efforts here at Grumblings Media, just smash the subscribe button right here, totally free, or just go ahead and consume more of our great content. Click either one of these two boxes.